Kia ora thana. it's wonderful uh, to be with you. The reading we're looking at is John 14 and those wonderful words of Jesus. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. What great, wonderful words to take on uh, in this time um, in our world. But what I want to focus on this morning is the words and the interaction between Jesus and the disciples, in particular, Thomas. As we do that, I wonder if you can recall a time in your life where you've been lost, but yet you didn't know it. A time where perhaps you know, location services are turned off. You can't ask Siri, you can't ask Google where you are. You don't know that you're lost, but you are. For me, I think of a time um, scuba diving on a 35 metre deep dive, coming back up to the surface, maybe around halfway. There's a point when you can't see the ocean floor and you can't see the surface. It's what the divers call the big blue. And for me, I remember in that situation when if you shut your eyes uh, and then open them again, and the bubbles have gone, you don't know which way is up. It's extremely disorientating. When you breathe again and the bubbles rise to the surface, you know which way to follow. I think perhaps in many ways, uh, this season in our world is a bit like that. It's just disorientating. We can lose which way is up. And so we have this wonderful gospel reading to encourage us on our way. These are words that I would often use at a funeral. Words of comfort, where Jesus says, I'm going to prepare a room for you. Yet, as Jesus shares the words in this reading, there's a sense that he's almost standing at the edge of his own grave. He's about to go uh, into his crucifixion, and the disciples don't know it yet, but into his resurrection also. It's about finding direction when we think we're on the right track, but we don't know the way ahead. I call it Thomasitis, this condition of Thomas, where he says to Jesus, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how do we know the way? And so out of Jesus, he gets the wonderful, beautiful saying, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. At this point in the story, Thomas has been following Jesus for three years. He would have heard the invitation, follow me. And so he has, along the seashore of Lake Galilee, through the wheat fields, through synagogues, along the roads, along the streets. And so he knows the way, he knows the roads, he's been following Jesus this long. And yet, at the same time, he doesn't know. There's a sense in this story where you could go, how does he go from saying, how can we know the way, to in Acts chapter 9, the early Christians were known as people of the way. So this metaphor that totally stumps them then starts to define them. And so let's drill down into that a little bit. What does it mean that they were people of the way? I wonder if you're a journey person or a destination person. I know for me, if we're traveling somewhere in the car, I can look at the little blue dot on my phone and think, well, where am I? I want to know the destination, but more, where am I on the way? And sometimes in looking at that, I miss what's going past out the window, the beautiful scenery, the adventure of the journey. A little bit like Thomas. And so they moved from this term that was a stumbling block for them, the way, to something that called them forth, that helped them become the church. And perhaps our location in this season as a diocese is we give up the illusion of control. We follow the way of Jesus, not knowing where it's going to lead us, just like those disciples did. They did not know or understand fully that Jesus had to be resurrected. And where Thomas eventually lands is the beautiful words we had in our lectionary a few weeks ago. My Lord and my God. Five simple words of obedience and of worship. And my prayer for us is that we hear his question. How do we know the way? We ask the question so that we can land with him on the answer of obedience and of worship that when we think we might get it someone else also pipes up with a question or a wondering like Philip show us the father and that's how it's supposed to be we're a group of people on a journey following the way of Jesus never quite fully getting it but always desiring hungering for more let me read us a few short words to close from Eugene Peterson he says this when Jesus says, I am the way, 
He threw a monkey wrench into Thomas's understanding. And so we join the speaker and participate in the creation of a fresh meaning. We throw away our collection of roadmaps and this is where we need each other. Not to study maps, but to keep the conversation of a lived reality going. And so may this week Jesus throw a monkey wrench into our lives. May the way expand before us. May we join with Thomas and ask the question, Lord, what are you doing in this season and how can we know the way? So that, so that we land in a place of obedience and of worship and we can echo his prayer of abandon, my Lord and my God. Amen. May God bless you and be with you.